in Austria. I thought that show was so good. And everyone was like, oh, you know, complaining because Mike didn't sing. And it's like, well, there's two options in a situation like that. Either they cancel and let everybody down or they just do what no effects do and just go, well, let's just give them what we what no effects do. Which is a no effects show. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and Mel- Melvin stepped up and I thought that was one of my favorite no effect shows I've ever seen because it was different watching Mike liberated from vocal duties freed him up as a performer and he's running around like a madman it was just it was a really special fun show but I find it funny because we live in this different time now with social media and, and like online criticism the negative yeah. stuff rises to the top always but it's so funny to me that a fan of no effects would criticize no effects for being no effects and doing, doing exactly what the, it's like that you can't open your set with a song like 60% and be like, this is our mission statement. This is how we roll. I'm not here to entertain you, et cetera, et cetera. And then they go, Oh, those, those guys don't give a shit. And it's like, well, they've kind of been saying they don't give a shit all the lock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Newsflash. Listen to the fucking lyrics. Dumb, dumb. I know. <laughs> I know it's, it's, I agree. I absolutely agree. That whole thing was, you know, Mike was really on the fence about playing some of those shows that we did on that trip when he lost his voice. He really didn't want to do a couple of shows. And we all talked him into it um, because we were like, what are we going to do? Not play? And all these people, you know, people had flown from Brazil and Australia. Like, what are we going to just not play at all? Like, you have three or four singers in the band that can cover, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be sloppy. <laughs> I mean, let's, it's ne- it's never perfect. Let's be honest. Yeah, let's be real. <laughs> but perfection gonna, is it, not what we want. And I mean, to the point where, like, they were like, "Karina, you go sing Champs Elysees," and I was like, "What are you talking about? It's in French. I only know like part of the verse. I don't know the whole song because I don't usually sing the whole song." And they're like, "Just go out and sing it." And I was like, "What are you talking?" <laughs> and literally on stage, they're like, "Just do it." And I was like, "What? It's in French. Like, if it was in English, I wouldn't be able to." <laughs> it's like. I know part of it, but I don't know the whole song. Um, and when it's I whistle. saw it, it was ridiculous. So I just handed this, you know, the mic out to the audience, like, All right, you're a bunch of Frenchies here. Somebody, someone's gonna, someone speaks French here because we're in Austria. <laughs> uh, I'll just do the parts I know. No, so you know, that's part of no effects. Is it's like it is sixty percent. There is an element of like things are always very unpredictable and. What I love about them is that every single show, and I noticed this when t- Dance Hall Crashers toured with them, their comedy is different every night. It's it not is. repeated. It's it not is. repeated. There's no <clears throat> script. And that's why sometimes, um, again, we won't go too much into this, but sometimes a joke will perhaps push the boundaries of, of taste and decency, but it's perhaps. because it's not preordained. And it just, in the moment, sometimes we say stuff and then, we go, I mean, they probably didn't think, oh, that was a bit much, but then all it takes is one person to go, that was too much for me. And it becomes this, but it, it's in situations like that for better or worse that you really realize like, oh, these guys aren't reading off a script. This is just off the cuff in the moment. Anything can happen. Yeah. And it's constant comedy backstage on the bus anyway. So it's like they're, they're, con- they're you know, they're flexing that muscle all the time. So that when they're on stage, it comes back out, you know, as a performer. But um, yeah, so, you know, back to the Austrian show, that was that was a rough night for all of us. I, me and Hefe also were really sick. I don't know if you remember this, but I, I talked remember, to you yeah. after the show. And I think you said hi to me before. And I was like, like, just not like responsive because I got really sick. So my, Mike had lost his voice. Melvin had already covered for him for like one or two days. So he was starting to lose his voice because he was tr- just kind of trying to keep it together. And then Hefe and I went to the doctor that morning, both had like some crazy throat infection diff- that was like, like we had gotten something from somebody like some kind of strep throat or something. So we both were on hardcore antibiotics that morning <laughs> and we were trying to keep it together. We're like, what is going on? Like we're all getting sick. So whatever Mike had had probably gave it to us. Um, so, so yeah, we were all really sick, like different, whatever. And I wasn't COVID, but we were all just like, (laughs) so, uh, yeah. What were we going to do? Not play the show. I mean, you know, the show must go on. They say that for a reason you have to, you have to give the, the people that are there something right. Try. 